All right, let's get on to this next one. All right, we have another PragerU video to do. We've, we've shouted about the first one. We've shouted about the election. Now we're going to talk about them lying about freelancers. Now, for those of you who don't know, I've been a freelancer for a long time. I'm, till, I'm still technically a freelancer. And as it turns out, being a freelancer in America sucks massively. And you get fucked all the time. So let's hear what PragerU has to say about it. Oh, it absolutely is. Can they not use a leftist slogan for their right-wing bullshit? Oh, they always steal it. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Let's let's hear what PragerU has to say first, and then we'll rant about it. Let's find out. Oh yeah, Daedal Dan, you better buckle in because we got another one to do after this. Workers of the world unite to protect. Fuck you! F I got one second, three seconds in. Fuck you! Get the fuck out of here with that. Holy shit! Workers of the World Unite is the fucking IWW th phrase. Holy shit. What a bunch of fucking pieces of shit. Holy motherfucking shit. That makes me so instantly mad. Instantaneously. Workers of the World Unite. And then they add this little star on. Protect your freedom. To protect your freedom. Okay. You have nothing to lose but your jobs, which is exactly- Oh, sick, silent. Let me check. We'll, we'll check that afterwards. What is happening in California and threatening to spread to the rest of the country. Just what we need, right? Fewer jobs and fewer people employed. Hmm. Hmm. It's almost like... Um, it's almost like... The jobs that are currently being provided in California, provided by companies like Uber and Lyft, are so bad that they don't really count as jobs. And that's what we're arguing about. Hey, Socrates TV, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome to all the new viewers. All of you who are just coming in, welcome to my channel. I am a... At today, I'm a very angry political edutainer. We talk about politics, we talk about media, we do a bunch of fun stuff on here, but today I'm yelling about PragerU because PragerU is dishonest as fuck. Hey, there's some dabs for you. Boom. Boom. I know I'm not doing it 100% correct. There you go. There's some correct dabs. There's a third one. Bam. And keep in mind, if you all want to be up on the screen, on the screen chat, you want to come join the website. Big hugs. There we go. There you go. Hugs. Bam. Flawless technique. I know. When I want to, um, we can do that. But consider, here's another one. Bam. Bam. Just consider uh, getting into the site chat. It's really easy. You can sign up with Twitch. You can just sign right in and uh, come hang out. You can come hang out in the, in the site chat. You get more emotes and everything. It's fucking cool as shit. And don't forget to follow so you get my updates. All right. Let's do this. Let's get back in here. Let's get some huggers in chat. There we go. Let's get some hug. Boop. Look at that. There we go. Why is this <sighs> happening? Exhibit A. Assembly Bill 5, or AB 5 as it's commonly known, passed by the California legislature in September of 2019. AB 5 was authored by a former union boss. As Based union boss? Based. Oh, I know Lorena Gonzalez. Lorena Gonzalez. Assemblywoman Lorena Gonzalez. The stated goal was to protect... Lorena Gonzalez is relatively based. Not amazing, but relatively based. Freelance workers from employers taking advantage of them. Instead, it has pushed thousands of these workers into the unemployment line. Jokes on them. They were already in the unemployment line. They just couldn't get any benefits. You want to know why? Really funny fact. So here's something a lot of people don't know. Did you know that when, you know how Donald Trump always talks about how we have the lowest unemployment um, ever? Well, it's actually because Donald Trump changed the way that we consider unemployment and people who are underemployed or are no longer like 
like severely underemployed are no longer considered unemployed. You have to be actively seeking. Um, no, no. If you're not actively seeking work, you're no longer considered um, unemployed. Wait, no, wait. I think I got that mixed up. Point is gig workers who just happen to have signed up with the Uber app are considered as employed. If they're doing any work for Uber at all, if they're making any money at all, they're employed. They're no longer considered unemployed. That's terrible. That's fucking terrible. Yeah, imagine this. Imagine, hey, Cornchi, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Any more primers in chat? Cornchi, thank you so much. This channel is made possible because of viewers like you. So if anybody has those pr Twitch Prime subs, throw them my way because you can help me grow. I would very much love it. But anyway, back to what we're talking about. Suh, dude. Suh. Um, happy to have you. Um, but yeah, the uh, the whole thing is, as it turns out, even if you have a job with Uber, you might not make any money. What if you have a job with Uber and you only and you live in an area where there's only like three people who need an Uber every day? You're working. You might be working 40 hours a day by waiting. You know, you might be driving around hoping that somebody uses the app, but you're not making any money. And that might be the only job available. Well, you're not considered unemployed, even if you're not making any fucking money at all. And that's pretty dishonest. They're arguing in favor of that sort of thing. They're arguing in favor that you being somebody who doesn't make enough money to live, it does work for a company, shouldn't be considered unemployed if that company is not making you enough money. Hmm. Here's why. Workers in the United States are classified as either employees or independent contractors, sometimes known as freelancers. Independent contractors are self-employed and contract their labor to one or more firms. Fun fact, fun fact about uh, independent contractors. Does anybody here know what the self-employment tax rate is? Anybody? I bet you don't. I bet you don't know what the percentage is unless you've been self-employed. Guess what? It's between 25 and 30%. You pay when you're a freelancer, you have to pay between 25 and 30% of every paycheck and you have to do it yourself. You don't get to do it automatically. Yeah, it's hell. They actually choke you out. You have to save aside 30% and you have to send that in to the IRS yourself. And if you don't, then you get penalized. That's pretty fucking rotten. Do you know what, uh, you know what capital, capital gains is? Oh yeah, it's quarterly. You're supposed to pay it quarterly. Not everyone does, but you're supposed to. Yeah, like what? 15% is like max capital gains. So you have people who are raking in millions and millions of dollars off of passive investments. They get they get taxed at 15%. And if you are a if you work for Uber, Lyft, and uh, that other one, I can't remember the third uh, ride share app. You work for all three of those companies. You're going to be paying 30% of your income into the IRS. The upsides to this arrangement are clear. Freelancers decide whom they work for, when, where, and how. They're their own boss. Sure, yeah, let's take a look at their sources real quick. That's fun. We'll do that. Let me just take a look at it real quick. I love I love looking at PragerU sources. They're always so pathetic. They're always so unbelievably pathetic. Where is their sources? Here we go. Get the fuck out of here, PragerU. Fuck off. About 2 million Californians are, are self-employed or independent ca contractors. Oof. Dozens of industries and trade group won carve-outs before the ill-conceived bill was passed to ensure it didn't affect them. I don't know what that means. What What are we... What, what, here, we'll just keep it up. We don't really need to look at anyone right now. We're just yelling at them right now. All right? So then what are employees? Employees typically work for one employer. In exchange, they're entitled to workplace benefits and protections that independent... Unless you're part-time, which most workers are, unless you're part-time, then you don't get benefits and, and, and protections. And contractors are not, such as health care, time off, minimum wage, and unemployment insurance. We don't have to agree which kind of employment is better. Different people have different preferences. It's called choice. But some people, 
specifically unions and progressive politicians. No, it didn't, Goofy for Jesus. I know I know that that's the a nice talking point, but that's not actually entirely true. There are some there were some people who were pushed below the part time line. Um, but that has been a problem before, uh, before and after Obamacare. I know because I did it, I dealt with it firsthand. Um, Obamacare ensured actually increased the amount of Americans who have health care, which reduces the cost on our health care system. Obamacare was imperfect, but it did not do this, this idea that it like destroyed everything is totally fantasy. Are anti-choice. AB5's author, a wait, wait, I'm sorry. It's called choice. But some people, specifically unions... You can, you, guess what, guys? You can choose between um, no job and working for slave wages so that you can barely afford a hot dog at 7-Eleven. Hey, that sounds fun, right? It's called choice. It's called choice, you fuckers. It's called choice. ...and progressive politicians are anti-choice. AB5's author, True. Assemblywoman Gonzalez, disdains freelance work. These were never good jobs, she said. That's true. They never were good jobs. Yes. Oh, really? She might want to talk to some of the 2 million Californians or the 57 million Americans who freelance. Yeah, yeah, Kino. Exactly. Would you rather have the whip or the cat of nine tails? It's called choice. It's called choice. Ah, it's called choice. Okay. Holy shit. That's so many freelancers. That's actually horrifying to think about. That's like what? That's like... What? Like a sixth of our population? This is a sixth of our population are currently doing freelance jobs? That's nightmare fuel for me. This makes me scream. This makes me scream to know that so many people are not only working part-time jobs at like McDonald's and shit, but also doing on the side the stuff that I used to do all the time. Freelancing is is nightmarish unless you're incredibly lucky there are some freelance jobs where you can do a good job where you can get good pay but it's incredibly rare 46 percent of those workers happen to be women okay what does that have to do with anything so, nice id poll nice id poll anti id poll prager you of course the ab5 supporters would say the law is needed yeah it is because companies especially gig economy firms such as uber and lyft willfully misclassify workers as freelancers to avoid providing benefits. Yeah, they do do that. They do do that. That is literally their entire business model. What's this? Did you get me? Did you did you clip me? Uh-oh. Have I been clipped? Uh-oh. Here we go. Let's check. Let's find out. Uh-oh. Americans who freelance. Yeah, yeah, Kino, exactly. Would you rather have the whip or the cat of nine tails? It's called choice. It's called choice. Ah! In Americans. <laughs> That's actually good. You should tag tag gay fish in that, and he'll if gay fish. Maybe he'll put it up on the the out of context. It's good as fuck. Oh shit. Oh shit, gay fish. Oh, Gay Fesh is here. There's one. I don't know if it's good. You get to decide. That is your art project, but it might be a good one. I don't know why the mod badges aren't working. I got to fix that. Why not ask the workers themselves? Well, pollsters have. According to a McKinsey study, everybody knows everyone's favorite pro worker McKinsey. McKinsey Institute, or what's it called? McKinsey Corporation? The uh, the company that was fixing bread prices? <laughs> Wait, you want me to get closer? Wait, am I am I peeking out the mic? I might have uh, unintentionally bumped my knob up. There we go. Sorry if I'm uh, blocking out the mic. Yeah, that was Mayor Pete, Mayo Pete's job. You got it. Nearly 80% of gig workers say they're happier than those working traditional jobs. They love their freedom and also earn a good living. In five stars, freedom. I love the freedom that I have to starve. Do it for the meme. Oh, you mean this one? You mean your firm was caught fixing bread price. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> 
fact, over 17 million freelancers quit their traditional job to freelance. Yeah, probably because their traditional job was giving them like four hours. There's this thing that people do where they choke. Have you ever have how many people in chat have worked for a job where they cut your hours intentionally just to push you out of the door so that you're working like six hours a week and you're getting like, you know, like a uh, fucking 30 bucks a week. And then you're and then they, they really want you to quit so that they don't have to give you unemployment. Well, guess what? Uh, guess what? Uh, flexible hours should be a part of any workplace. That should be something that we have. Workplaces, it should be up to managers to schedule things instead of workers. What actually happens at most jobs in America, we have no flexibility. You have no right. You walk into your workplace and you are a slave instantly. They will make you work when you have, if, whether you have kids or not. And if not, you and your kids can starve. So fuck you. That's the attitude of the American workplace. That's the attitude that the American workplace has. And two out of three of them say they earn more now than before. For the majority, their new incomes outpace their previous salary within just one year. Half of the freelancers... I would love... Oh, I got to see the numbers on this. I got to see the numbers on this one. Let's find this. I have to. I have to. Where is it? Where is it? By the way, I used to work on Upwork... Upwork is a very specific type of gig economy and it's completely imploded. This has this website has imploded since um since the uh, coronavirus pandemic. Let's find this. Let's find this. Oh, I want to see this source, please. Upwork. It's Upwork. This is this is a blog by a freelancing company. The Freelancers Union and Upwork release a new study revealing insights into the almost 54 million pre freelancing in America. Um, I dislike basically everything, Tolstoy. Brager U is one of the most dishonest out outlets I've ever seen in my entire life. And if you're writing for them, I, I think you should hang your hat up in shame and get a more honest job. If that's actually true. I don't think you are, though. It's actually embarrassing. It's actually embarrassing how bad they are. They literally lie. You bury your sources nowhere so that you can lie about them. You cite sources that are literally... This is a video about freelan Free the Freelancers, which cites a freelancing company as a source on what you should believe about freelancing companies. Do you know how dishonest that is? Deeply, deeply dishonest. Let's find out. The annual Freelancing in America study finds out more people are freelancing by choice. They would not take, they would not quit freelancing no matter how much it was paid. So 50%, only 50% of freelancers say they would not quit freelancing. Oh, this is definitely before. This was published. When was this published? Let's see if I can find out when this was published. I don't think they list the publishing date. We could probably find out. This, this video... Or this was, pu they don't even put, that's how dishonest this is. They don't even put when this was pu published. Let's see. Let's find out this one. When was this published? Here we go. Ah, uh, yes. 2015. Those are numbers from 2015. This is from 2015. This was at the peak of the new freelancing. This is, oh my God, it's so dishonest. Dab. Dab. This is so deeply dishonest. This data is from 2015 when freelancing was booming and there was actually money in it. Over the last five years, freelancing has cratered. Cratered. Uh, incredible. So this is what this article, this is what they've they've cited. To prove that, that freelancers are good, they cited a corporation a freelancing corporation the leading freelancing corporations internal research about how good freelancing is that's based on data from 2015 this is why we talk about prager u videos this is why we talk about them this is fucking unbelievable this is so so yeah tolstoy if you write for um if you write for fucking um Actually, you know what? Tolstoy, if you actually 
write for this. If you actually write for that company, you should join my Discord and let's talk about it because I would love to tell you to your face how ashamed of yourself you should be. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Yeah, literally, children could source their videos better. Say they would oh, not to take it. Tolstoy's gone. Bye bye. Traditional job, no matter how much they were offered. And in a survey of female gig workers, nearly two out hey, of three women who have a side job prefer being independent contractors over being. What does this have to do with anything? Oh, it's almost like they're vaguely gesturing that women like freelancing. Have you ever considered that women um, freelance more frequently because they also have to take care of their kids and freelancing gives them slightly better flexibility so they can have at least some money to put food in their children's mouths? Holy shit. Yes, that is a literal thing. I'd like to point out that freelancing is so bad that some people have turned to capture cracking as a side gig. That side gig makes about 60 cents an hour. I've done that in the past when I was really desperate. Employees. AB5 has already done damage. It has wiped out the livelihoods of many independent contractors and will limit new opportunities in the future. Freelance writers... Spooka Pretty says, Capitalism did not invent the subordination of women. The latter existed in various forms in all previous class societies. But capitalism established new, distinctly modern forms of sexism, underpinned by institutional structures. Its key move was to separate the making uh, of the people from the making of profit, to assign the first job to women and to subordinate it to the second. With this stroke, capitalism simultaneously reinvented women's impression and turned the whole world upside down. True. That is True. and journalists have been especially hurt. The law includes a provision making it illegal for them to produce more than 35 pieces of content in a year for a single company. Left-leaning Vox Media hailed the bill's passage as a victory for workers everywhere, then turned around and laid off 200 freelance True. writers rather than make them full-time employees. That's also, Vox Media is not left-wing, and secondly, this was a disaster. And this was, this was not because of that. This was because they were trying to unionize. Oh, my God. The rideshare industry estimates that AB5 will increase their labor costs by 20 to 30 percent. Good. Good. These companies need their labor costs increased. Are you fucking kidding me? They have no costs. Holy shit, irate lump. There's a 2019 version of the slide deck and it includes gems like younger generations are more likely free to freelance, especially Gen Z. 53% of workers ages 18 through 22 freelance, the highest freelance participation rate of any age bracket since this study launched in 2014. Holy shit. Do you know how bad that is? Do you know how horrific an idea that is? That there are so many people desperate for money right now in our country that... 53% of young people are working gig economy jobs where they're guaranteed no benefits and they're not even guaranteed pay. They're not even guaranteed pay. That is so bad. I don't think people understand how disastrous that is. That means there's an entire generation of people right now who have nothing, who have nothing and nothing to fall back on. Those jit, those those gig, those gig jobs aren't. Ever, they did never have looked good. The only benefit is that they were not. They didn't have to be directly under the immediate supervision of um, of of, of a fucking boss who's constantly yelling at you. They're not going to look good. They don't look good now. Nobody's. Do you think gig work is booming right now? Besides, uh, besides Uber Eats. And Uber Eats, we all saw the Uber Eats guy, right? Where is his name? Where is his name? Let's see. Let me see here. Where's the guy? Where's the fucking guy? There's an article that was published a couple. We we read this on stream. That's true. Content creation is technically a form of gig work. We are independent com contractors. We do not get any benefits. So if you can't afford to support and you like the content, you all make it possible. But uh, let me just find this. Um, let 
Let me see here. Where's this article? Here we go. This is the one. This is the guy. Here he is. Let's read it. This was from this year. This Uber Eats driver is on track to make 100K a year. Here's how he's doing it. You you might read this and go, oh my God, 100K? Wow. Well, what could I do with 100K? Just wait. Sam Lyons likes a good challenge. And when his new job fell through because of a coronavirus hiring freeze, damn. Lion wanted to aim high. That's when Lion, 26 years old, decided to create what he calls the Uber Eats Challenge. The Salem, Oregon resident committed to doing deliveries for 12 hours per day, every day for the month of June. 12 hours a day, every single day for the month of June. By the end of the month, he had made 795 deliveries and driven nearly 5,000 miles. 5,000 miles on his own car. This is not a car provided by Uber. He has to finance this. Check this video out for a full breakdown of how much money he earned and what he learned from the experience. He did it for one month. He didn't make 100K a year. He did this for one month, working 12 hours a day, every day with no breaks. Do we all think the gig economy is a good deal? Do we all think the gig economy is wonderful in any way? Gee, thank you so very much. My gig working sisters and brothers. Fuck yes. Thank you very much for the tier one sub to the site. Enjoy your fancy new name. It will take a few seconds. Oh yeah, if you want your name to update, just re-log into the site. Just log out and log back in and it will pop up and update instantly. Breaking my back to death sounds like a good deal to me. Yeah, you know what this guy is? Look at this. Here, in fact, I think this is the video. Yeah, let's watch the video. Here, we'll watch the video again. We've watched this before on stream, but it, it's very, very... I'm uh, driving Uber Eats for 12 hours a day for the whole month of June to see how much money I can get. Damn. This looks familiar, doesn't it? There he is. Wait, where is it? Where's the June guy? To see how much money I can get. Look, look at this. Doesn't that look familiar? This looks familiar, doesn't it? This looks real familiar, doesn't it? Hey, look. Hey, look at Sam Porter Bridges from the dystopian post-apocalypse game, Death Stranding. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Is there really that much of a difference? Anyway, let's get back to PragerU. I think I've made my point. As a result, Rideshare companies may schedule drivers in advance and reduce the number of drivers during slow hours or in less busy markets. Wow, that sounds like a really shitty setup that's designed to fuck over drivers at the benefit of a corporation. Um, maybe, Gina. Uh, we can talk about it after. That would be, that should be pretty interesting. For customers, this means longer wait times, fewer available rides, and higher prices. For drivers, it means reduced flexibility and reduced income. It may also kill hundreds of thousands of jobs. From its inception, AB5 was fundamentally flawed. Dozens of industries and trade groups lobbied for and won carve-outs before the bill was passed to ensure it didn't affect them. But special carve-outs are not the way to fix bad policy. That approach only rewards those who can afford to pay for special treatment and punishes those who can't. Legislative attempts to overturn- you mean, you mean exactly like what the gig economy is designed to do in the first place? That's the entirety. That is the entirety of the gig economy right there. For an AB5 that failed. Not surprising Good. given the influence the unions have over California politics. Good. Four challenges have been filed and are ongoing. But legal action takes time and hardships are- Yeah. Like, you mean like coronavirus, which your fucking candidate that you stan all the time hasn't done shit about? Your candidate, which literally cut public funding and public services in the middle of a pandemic? Your candidate, which who, whose current policy is, we're not going to do anything. We can't get it under control. We can't get it under control. Yeah, amazing. 
immediate. This would all be bad enough if it were just a California problem. But New Jersey, New York, Illinois, Wisconsin, and Oregon are all considering AB 5s. I would be willing to bet that Uber Corporate gave them some fucking, gave them a bunch of help or money for this fucking video. 100%. Style legislation. Although AB5 is positioned as progressive policy, Let me show you something after there's this. nothing progressive about what it does. It's backward, not forward looking. Flexibility, freedom, and opportunity is the bright future of the American world. Ah, yes. You too have the opportunity. Man, I can't imagine anything. You know what is, you know what, when I think of freedom and opportunity, what I think of is the freedom for a corporation to offer me work where I have to pay all of the bills, I have to pay for my own car, I need to have a car to begin it, I need to have a cell phone to do it, I have to pay the bills for a cell phone in order to do the work, and then, even then, I might not get work. That sounds like opportunity and freedom to me. That's the biggest thing. No matter what gig economy job you're talking about, this, any gig economy job requires you have the stuff to bring to the table. You could just, in, in another world, you could join a taxi company and you would have, they pay you a certain amount in order to keep your car maintained. You submit forms at the end because you were considered under taxi companies, which admittedly taxis do cost more than Uber, but you can be sure that you're renting from somebody who's not going to starve to death, most likely. Eh, just a little bit more likely. Yeah, well, that's why it's the you can't. It's almost impossible to 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 single handedly organize against this. You have to legislate this stuff because, as it stands, these are just illegal work practices being hidden under the guise of innovation. No other job like it's all. This is only possible because this is being done through an app, and so it seems different than previous issues. This seems different than stuff that we've already crossed the bridge of in the past. We've crossed this bridge in the past with work. Can you imagine if you got hired for a job and that job required you to go into work every day and stand in line for six hours to determine whether you would get any work at all or not? And there was no guarantee of how much work you get or how much pay you would get? Yeah, Uber is trash. Uber is a company that is only possible. It's only possible because of venture money. So let me explain how it works. Let me just show you because we've gotten our our fair share of this this bullshit. Let's let's do a real quick thing here. Ready? Let me show you how it works. We're going to do another drawing here. Ready? So this is how it works. Uber. Uber is not profitable. So, here you have Uber and what they get is they get a bunch of investors. Uber has millions and millions and millions of dollars of investors that get injected into it. What that means is they can take a loss. Oh, that's going to be terrible to read. Loss. They can take losses on offering cheaper car services. So you have your little cars here. Fuck. Uh, I don't know what a car looks like. Here you go. There's a car. Here's the window. Do do do. You get your little cars here. Here's your car. Bam. So they get, they are able to they're able to leverage losses on this while they undercut taxis. So taxis, you have to have a company first and they're going to cost more because they can't leverage losses because they don't have billions of dollars of investor capital, but they're functionally the exact same thing. You have a driver, you have a car here, you have all these sort of shit, but they can't do, they can't leverage their losses because they don't have this. Taxis, do not have the money. They don't have that initial investment capital. It doesn't exist for them. They can't take losses. Which means they're high price. And these guys up here are low price. But they're not making a profit. All they have to do is wait for long enough for these low prices to put the taxis out of business. So their goal is to use this low prices to wait out, to undercut the high prices of the taxis until the taxi companies fucking go rip. 
and once they go rip, then they can charge whatever the fuck they want. Once they're the only show in town, they can charge whatever the fuck they want. I'm not in California. I don't live in California. I used to live in California, though. It's the Amazon Walmart model. Eh, it's okay. Gina, it's okay. We Remember, we allow chuds as long as they're not being hateful. Yeah, we might have time for a debate. I gotta be on that show in 30 minutes, though, that I signed up for. Y'all wanted me to take it, so we're gonna go on the fucking panel, and y'all can watch me shout at people. It's gonna be fun. All right, we have one more PragerU video to do.